Hello, America. Lots of things going on with the election, but I just want to talk about one specific claim for this video. There's a video going around from Dr. Shiva Iyadurai claiming he's found statistical indicators of election fraud in Michigan. He's a man with a lot of qualifications, including a very strong engineering and scientific background. But I don't think he's right about this. So here's how I think about it. For those who haven't seen his video, let me lay out his argument. For each ballot, you can vote for a few different roles. President, Senator, Congressman. So depending on how you vote, there's two different types of ballots that can result. Straight party, where people vote completely Republican or completely Democrat for all positions on their ballot. Or mixed, where people vote for a mixture of Democrats and Republicans on the same ballot. The straight party ballots are a rough baseline for how popular a party is. If you line up all the precincts left to right from Democrat to Republican, it makes sense that in very Republican areas on the right, Republicans are going to get the most straight party votes. And in Democrat areas, more of these ballots will be Democrat. Nothing groundbreaking so far. Now, according to Dr. Ayadurai, the mixed ballots can be used as an indicator of how popular Trump is overall. Because somebody can fill in, say, all Republicans except for Trump, or all Democrats except for Trump. But either way, you would expect that mixed ballots would follow the same pattern as straight party ballots. Heavy Republican areas means more votes for Trump, heavy liberal areas means fewer. And now, with those two metrics established, you could take the difference between the two to see how much more or less popular Trump is than Republicans overall within a given area. And that difference, whether it's more or less, doesn't matter, but whatever the difference is, should be pretty constant regardless of the area's political leanings. We said that in red areas, both Trump and Republicans overall will be really popular. In blue areas, they'll both be really unpopular. That relative difference between ballot types shouldn't change much. So if we were to keep track of this difference between the two on the vertical axis, it should look like a straight line. Now the strange part is, when Dr. Ayadurai looked at the actual data, the plot looked more like this. The more Republican the area was, the less mixed ballot votes Donald Trump got versus Republican straight ballots. And the pattern was very consistent. That's weird, right? It goes against all the intuition we just talked about. Why would Donald Trump's popularity get lower against other Republicans the more Republican a precinct is? So Dr. Ayadurai looked at a couple potential explanations, and he concluded that based on how consistent this pattern was, the most likely explanation was an algorithm that was switching votes away from Donald Trump the more votes he got. Well, that definitely sounds bad. It's a pattern that seemingly defies logic and intuition in an unnaturally consistent way, and the explanation would mean there's widespread election fraud. But I don't think that's really what's happening here. So what is happening? Well, it's a natural side effect of us choosing to categorize ballots as either straight party or mixed, and then comparing a specific office's performance to a group performance with more strict requirements. Let me explain what I mean. The distinction between straight party and mixed is arbitrary. If you fill out a ballot that has five offices up for re-election, and you vote for two, three, or four Republicans, there's no reason to make that the arbitrary cutoff when you get to five Republicans and say, okay, now we should treat this differently. Now it's something unique that we need to count in a separate group. There's no meaningful rationale for that. But when you do divide it up that way, it turns into just basic probability. Let's say we look at ballots in a very Republican area, where Republicans are 90% of the population and there's five offices up for re-election. In order for us to count any given ballot in this special straight party ballot club, all the offices on that ballot need to have the same type, either all Republican or all Democrat votes. Now, what are the odds of each of these outcomes? Well, to get a straight Republican ballot, you have a 90% chance that an office goes Republican, and you need that to happen all five times. So you multiply 90% by 90% five times, which is 90% to the fifth power, and that comes out to 59%. To get a Democrat straight party ballot, the probability for each race that you have left is 10% so 10% to the fifth power, and that comes out to 0.001%. So if you have a bunch of ballots in a Republican area, and there's a 59% chance of finding a Republican straight party ballot, but only a 0.001% chance of finding a Democrat straight party ballot, well, guess what? Odds are, all of your straight party ballots are likely to be Republican. 99.998% of them, to be more exact. 
So that's the first main number in Dr. Ayadurai's argument. Out of all the straight party ballots, what percentage were Republican? And the answer for heavily Republican-leaning areas is pretty much all of them, because it's exponentially harder for Democrats to get a straight party vote. The second number in the analysis is what portion of the remaining mixed ballots voted for Trump in the presidential race. Well, we started out with a baseline of 90% Republican support for any given office in this precinct. That baseline expectation is already going to be lower than the 99.9% .9 share of Republicans in the straight party tickets. Again, just because of how hard it is for Democrats to get any straight party tickets in a heavily Republican precinct like in this example. So the difference is already 9 percentage points lower to begin with. And on top of that, we've removed over half of the Trump supporting votes from the remaining group already because for some reason Dr. Ray is counting mixed and straight ballots separately. So the votes we're left with by definition have more Democrat votes in them, making the effect even more pronounced. So to sum up this example, each party has to hit their lucky number all five times in a row on a given ticket in order to get counted in this straight party ballot group. And the more a party is in the minority, like Democrats in a very Republican area, the odds of that happening go down exponentially, not linearly. It's like having to get all the lottery numbers right. And that gives the majority party a greater share of the straight party ballots. So comparing this to the odds of getting just one vote for a given position, you see the gap between those two metrics increasing and giving you that downward line like Dr. Rayadurai sees in his data. All right. So did that explanation make sense, or did I misunderstand the analysis? Let me know down in the comments. And look, ever since the election results started coming in, there have been a lot of misleading videos, claims, and even very sophisticated sounding analyses from people with impressive credentials. And they're worth looking into to make sure our democracy is safe. But don't let your desire for a certain outcome be the one to convince you that bad evidence is true. Even very smart, qualified people and people in high public offices aren't immune to getting caught up in what they maybe wanted to happen or think should be happening over what really is happening. Now I am working on a bigger series of videos on the election aftermath, so if you want to stay tuned for that, don't forget to subscribe. If there are other claims of fraud or topics you want me to break down, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.